Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today real quick is just do kind of an update on this Gladiator build. There's been a whole lot of modifications over the last few weeks that I really haven't got a chance to put on video or give you the reasons why I did some of the things that I did. And I also wanted to feature a product that I've been using now for several months during this Gladiator build. And I've used it both with just the Jeep and with my new overlanding trailer in different ways with different sizes of this item. So let's talk about that as well during this video. Stay with me guys and we'll get started. Okay, so one big thing guys, if you remember right, we had put this iCamper rooftop tent on top of the Gladiator and I left it there for a while and used it several times. And it was a nice addition to the Gladiator, but it became a little bit of a pain in the butt due to the fact that once you set it up on top of the Jeep, you're basically stuck in that position until you fold everything back up and put it away again and drive off. So I wanted to find an overlanding trailer that I could put it on top of and pull behind the Gladiator and then be able to drop the trailer, level it up, put up the tent, and then go if I wanted to, fishing, hunting, exploring, whatever I wanted to do, and then come back to my campsite later, which this allows me to do. So one of the biggest upgrades we've done lately is we have purchased this smitty built overlanding trailer and it hooks onto my gladiator and it pulls like a dream so i was going to talk to you a little bit about that and show you kind of how i've got this set up or how it's meant to be set up and then we'll talk a little bit about peripherals as we go okay, so obviously you've got a rack on top of this that you can't put a rooftop tent on this rack also goes up and down so that you can create more space in here if you wanted to put a kayak in there You've got tie down areas around this trailer that you could do that and have a kayak on top and then your tent on top of that even. I chose to keep it fairly low so that it's lower to the ground, easier to get in out of and easier to manipulate the tent. But I may raise it up a little bit. I had a kayak on top of my Jeep this weekend in Tennessee and I like that. It doesn't bother me to have it up there and I can leave the trailer, take the kayak and go, go fishing and things like that. But it also may be convenient to not have the kayak on there at times and just have it on the trailer and tow it to location and then transfer it to the top of the truck if I want to go off somewhere and go fishing. So I'm going to think about that, but there's a lot of versatility in this trailer that way. Now, the first thing you've got here is you've got a large back compartment in this trailer. And it's got two sliding drawers on it that lock in place. And I got a vinegary smelling rag that I just wiped out my refrigerator with today because I had some fish in there over the weekend. I had fish, venison, and pork in there. And obviously fish leaves a smell inside coolers. So what I generally do is clean them completely out and wipe them down with vinegar and then let them dry before I close them back up. So the storage inside here is really, really convenient. I can put two Jackery solar panels right in between everything else, between the sliding drawers and they fit in there like a glove. And Jackery is one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about today because they're having a ninth anniversary sale this week. And you can get 15% off lots and lots of items on their website. In fact, I think it's site-wide, 15% off. So I would go to Jackery USA. I'll put a link down in the description box of this. You can check that out. So the first thing I do as far as my Jackery goes is I slide this drawer out for you here. I carry the Jackery 1500 in this trailer all the time. And then I carry a 500 in my Gladiator. So we'll talk through that in a minute and reasons why. This 1500 will run this ice co refrigerator for about four days, four and a half days without ever charging it. I've had the thing on and off a of charge all weekend. It's sitting right now at 29% battery. That was with the refrigerator running all night last night again without any charging to this Jackery with the panels. And then I turned it off this morning, cleaned it all out let it dry, put everything back, and I haven't bothered to charge the Jackery up yet. I'll do that today. I'll just throw the solar panels out here in the yard when the sun's at its highest, and I'll charge this Jackery back up, or I can plug it straight into a wall socket with an extension cord if I want to on outside on my porch. It'll work either way. And then I just take a couple bungee cords and strap them over the top of this. It's got plenty of areas on this roller deck here, which will support 100 pounds of weight. And I can tie all this stuff down, run bungee cords around this, and nothing moves when I'm traveling. So that's one side of that is basically dedicated to my refrigerator system and my jackery, my generator. And then the opposite side of that, really the only thing I've got on that right now is I do have 
a chair and a table stacked on top of a large work box here and this is just basically my peripheral camp items that I put in this box so it's basically a camp storage box now I've got my tailgater table that you've seen in a lot of my videos and pictures online that fit over the top of my tire and I use it on the top tire of the trailer or the tire of the Jeep or work either way and then a couple front runner chairs I usually keep one in the gladiator if I'm traveling with just that and I keep one in here so I've got two if I've got the two pieces together so you've got a lock button here on the side a blue push button you push that down that unlocks the drawer and it slides in and then it has a spring loaded bar here that locks in place so that the drawer can't move while you're driving and you've got lots of tie down points on the inside too if you'd like to use them for holding different types of cargo in there and then I keep a small level in here they give you a couple small bubble levels with the trailer that you can put different places but i prefer just a magnetic level that i can put anywhere on the trailer i'm trying to level things out now let me get these two jackery panels back in here real quick and we'll walk around the trailer here in just a second okay so this door has two latches on it shut down and locked and it has key locks on every single door on the bottom here on justice camera just a little bit maybe for you. it's got a couple spots right here for jack stands that go underneath here that are stored up in the front so that you can level the trailer this way and make it nice and stable for the rooftop tent on the near side of this trailer you have a door that opens up and a drawer and the drawer basically holds my cook partner stove and has a spot right here that a stainless steel sink drops into that comes with the trailer. But I found that these foldable sinks work really, really well. They're convenient, they're simple, they're easy to empty and they're easy to fill up. And it actually fits right down in there like it was made for it. So that's a perfect fit for your sink and your stove in this galley area. And then I just store all of that up here on top with a box in it that has condiments, spices, cooking utensils, things like that. And then I have another box that has cookware. And I store my coffee pot up here in a couple cups and a hot plate, things like that for the wife and making coffee and stuff. And that all stores in this side very, very easily. So I've got my total kitchen basically right there. Now the front side of this comes with a full size spare that's strapped and locked in. It's got a front compartment here. Then I've got my propane tank stored in, my jack stands, wheel chocks, fire extinguisher, and extension cords. They all go inside this. And again, all of these storage boxes have separate locks on them. It's got a really nice heavy duty tongue on it down here with bow shackle chains, the plug-in system. It's got electric brakes on it that break when you break. You've got an emergency brake here that you can put on when you're in the stationary position so that it doesn't roll. And then you have a drop down leg here on a roller that you can lift it obviously off of your tow device or your ball. And then you level it on the other two sides with jacks that are in here that attach to the back. Another storage box on this side that actually has a drawer in it that pulls out. And this drawer is made for a generator if you want to put one in there. I carry my five gallon lifesaver water jug in there and my peripheral camp box of cooking implements for cooking over a fire. And those are the things that I put in there. Again, that drawer also locks in place so that it doesn't move. And you have a key lock on the door as well. Tie out points all over the outside of this trailer to tie things down to the top of it if you had space or room and you wanted to do that. A very, very well built trailer with an independent suspension that has no axle. Each wheel is independently on suspension so that it doesn't twist when you're going over uneven ground and things like that. It just does this independently. I really, really like this trailer. It towed like a dream all the way to Tennessee and back. Now I've got a Jackery 500 that I keep in the Gladiator. The reason I have two of these is one stays in the trailer all the time and it runs the refrigerator the majority of the time, but it can also charge any peripheral items around camp, iPads, cell phones, computers, drones, all those types of things. But this one travels with me in the Jeep all the time and it's used to, again, charge peripheral devices as well as batteries for my bio NO 
for my bio inno battery, excuse me, for my ham radio, as well as things like cell phones, drones, and things like that that I'm using out of the Jeep. So this uses me a secondary power source that I can carry with me. That's much lighter weight, much smaller. This one is 500 amp hours. The other one is 1500. So again, it's only got one port in it, so you can only plug one solar panel into it instead of two. But if you've got a 100 watt solar panel going into this thing, it charges it in no time flat. You got three USB ports, one 120 and a 12 volt cigarette lighter port there and a couple of Anderson power poles on there that are 12 volt. The thing just works fantastic. You know, again, Jackery's ninth anniversary sale is going on right now. I do not make affiliate money off Jackery. I don't believe in doing stuff like that with companies that I work with. I promote products because I like them. I've been using these Jackery's now for months. I've never had an issue with them. I love them. They've never failed to charge the things I need to charge, and they charge very quickly with the solar panels that are used with these units, the Jackery solar panels. So I can't say anything but good things about them. And again, I'm not making any money for saying this as far as affiliate link stuff kind of goes. I don't do that. I will put a link to their website and their information for their ninth anniversary sale in the description of this video. But I do carry two of these Jackery's, and that's why I carry them. One is specifically for the Gladiator, travels wherever it goes. One is specifically in the cargo trailer or the overlanding trailer, and it travels wherever it goes because it's larger and can power the refrigerator for a longer period of time, whereas this one's smaller and just is used to travel and charge peripheral gear that I may have in the Gladiator with me while I go. Okay, so as you know, I've got these drawer systems from Deck USA in the back of my Gladiator. Nothing new. However, I have kind of changed the way I do things with those drawers because now that I have the rooftop tent off the Gladiator, one of the things that I do is on this side, I store all the things that I need to use a hammock on the McLean manufacturing bracket that goes on the back of my Gladiator so that I can hammock camp when I don't have the rooftop tent. If I just want to go for an overnight or something like that, I can go with a simple hammock and underquilt overquilt scenario instead of having to drag the whole trailer in the tent with me and then i have a couple of peripheral poles and things like that in there as well as things for fishing and hunting i've got my fishing poles in there my m6 scouts in there some spare ammo and things like that and then the bracket for hammock camping and then this other side jam that in there <laughs> the other side of this thing is nothing but my recovery gear so snatch straps toe straps bow shackles, soft shackles, uh, you know, things like this device that's used with your winch rope to be able to give you two to one advantage or go back to your own vehicle and pull your own vehicle forward and things like that. A simple battery charger to make sure that if my battery goes dead, I can recharge. Tire deflator, things like that. And then I've got a compressor up in the front as well so that I can inflate those tires once I deflate. The recovery gear stores in here. We won't go through all of that today. And then on top of the Jeep, I keep two sets of traction boards, one set of max tracks, one set of action tracks. And now I've got space on the top of that metal frame of this RSI smart cap that I can now put a tri-mount, tri-magnetic mount up there and put a ham stick straight in the middle of that big giant ground plane of metal there, which gives me a big advantage for ham radio as well. Okay guys, so again, the gist of this video was really just an update on some things like the overlanding trailer, moving the tent, changing some things around in my configuration, the way I carry things within the Gladiator and what I carry. And I didn't want to get too over involved in that and make it too long of a video because I also wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of Jackery's 15% off sale for their ninth anniversary because that was part of the reason for this video as well, was to talk about those Jackery units and help you to understand that Number one, I think they're a good unit. I think they're well worth the money. Uh, I showed them to a lot of people in Tennessee who actually saw them working and saw them operating and were very impressed with them. And I think you will be too. Like I said, I'm not an affiliate for Jackery. So I'm not selling Jackery's to make money. That's not what this is all about. It's all about telling you what gear I think is worth having. And I think that's what I do. You know, more than anything else, I try to test and trial different types of gear for different types of scenarios from ultralight to overlanding, fishing, hunting, trapping, survival, bushcraft, all those types of things so that I can tell you what gear I think is worth your dollar. Well, guys, I really appreciate you joining me today for this quick video. 
hope it's not too long and drawn out on some of the changes that we've done to the Gladiator as well as talking about the ninth anniversary sale for Jackery USA. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.